I was searching for some video and in the Google search results came across your site about, I ended up on one of your posts, which is about unbundling Fiverr. And yeah, I love this kind of stuff and your post is amazing. So this is what I want to talk to you about. <laughs> and it's been a while, I think, since you published this one, but the opportunity is still there. You still remember <laughs> the post at all? Yeah, I got yeah, a little bit. I've been going over it a little bit, going through the database a little bit, and I've reviewed the post a little bit here. Yes, I do remember a little bit. I think a big impetus for that post is Glenn Alsa from formerly Viper Chill and now Gaps, I guess. He published a post like on how he was doing these SEO audits. And I, I'm not sure if you've seen that or not. but And so I saw that. And then a couple of days later, I, I saw this um, Gotcha CEO showed how they went to Fiverr and hired all these different people to do SEO audits. And then they found this one gig and then they just accidentally noticed that it was being resold at another platform at three times the price or five times the price, whatever. I think it was like they bought it for $15 and somebody was selling it for $75, the exact same service, the exact same layout. It's just like a simple arbitrage thing. So when I saw that, then I just, okay, this is, this is a good place to look for startup ideas. Because um, Glenn Alsop with his SEO audits, like he's a, he's big, big in the SEO space if people don't know him, but um, he's been doing SEO work for, like, I bought his course, I don't know, 12 years ago, 13 years ago, a long time ago. And he has, it's easy for him to get clients. So he does these $1,000, $5,000 audits. And so it's easy for him to get clients just because he's got a big name. But he just did this small project and he ended up making six figures off of doing these audits for a short term, just as an experiment, basically, he was doing it. So after that, I just see that you can do, you can really productize a lot of things like that, especially on Fiverr. And then I started going down the rabbit hole and you're finding a lot of people are making like big bucks on these small little gigs. They do these little hundred dollar gigs and they probably have a team of uh, outsourcers or people that assist them and they can probably get them done very quickly if you have the right processes in place and you charge like Fiverr used to be only $5, but now gigs can be like $300. Now it's not really Fiverr anymore. The name doesn't match anymore, but it's a good place just to see because the services are so discreet. It's like, I'll design a logo for you. I'll design, I'll come up with a new slogan for your website. I'll record one minute of audio for you. And it's everything is such a focused thing. So it's easy for people to go in there and say, okay, yeah, this is, I need this. I'll buy this because there's no, there's no evaluation. You can see all the reviews. You know exactly what you're going to get. It's not like um, shooting in the dark. If you're trying to hire an agency to say, okay, can you help me take my blog to the next level? Like you don't even know what the next steps are going to be. But on, on Fiverr, you can follow the process and it's very clear. So it's, I think it's a great place to find um, ideas and what to do next. Yeah, totally agree. But it's so funny because I'm, I happen to be um, a huge Glenn fan too like viper chill you still remember like plugin id block you wrote <laughs> age is a gone uh, which course did you buy years ago i think cloud living something was this uh, thing back then. I, 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 don't, I don't even know actually i don't even remember i just know that i bought like he was launching something and then he had early bird pricing and i just remember that okay i like i missed out on the early bird pricing because i was in a different time zone when it launched so i lost there's only 50 spots. And I said, Hey, I, I really want this. Can I still get this? And he sold it. I just remember that he sold it to me after the 50 spots were done. So that's my memory of that. I can't, that, this was like 12 years ago at least. Yeah. I can't even remember. I can't remember. It's funny because Glenn and I are roughly the same age, I think, but I learned a ton um, from him, I think 10 years ago or so, really when I started hustling online with, with first little experiments and I, I still remember printing out his blog posts so I could can read them at work. So I, I worked at a hospital. It, it was mandatory here in Germany. Um, you have to do one social year or whatever it's called. And I worked in a hospital. It was boring. So I always printed out his blog posts and read them. We had no tablets back then. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, super. He's, he's, he's an amazing writer at the very least. And obviously also a, a great marketer. Yes, yes. I know, like, uh, I, I interviewed his, I don't know, his partner or his friend, Diggy. Yeah. So I like, I, I connected with Diggy quite a few times online, but never Glenn directly anyways. Yeah, but, actually, um, I, I chatted briefly with Glenn because I once tested one of his plugins or something like that. And also we exchanged emails, but I can't remember <laughs> the topic. It was really 10 years ago. And yeah, it's, he's gone a bit dark 
recently, but I, 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 it's funny. I just saw that he's now following me on Twitter, actually. So I got to reach out to him. <laughs> yes, good, good. <laughs> uh, send, send him a hi and tell him like, like the backstory that I actually, yeah, he, he, he is one of the main sources of inspirations that got me, got me try this whole online thing, show that it's possibly and also how it's done. Really cool. Uh, really cool yeah. tangent, but back to fire. Well, I think, and, yeah. I think Gwen is a great example. If you specialize and focus and do it long enough, you can build really big businesses out of all these really tiny ideas. I think most people that experiment and jump around from idea to idea, and they never really get good and specialize in anything. And so everybody I know that has just stuck with a single idea long enough finds a way to make it to succeed in some way or another. That's one thing that's missing from this equation is most people give up way too soon. True, true. But not let's not forget that Glenn wrote a personal development blog yeah. for a long time. <laughs> it's, it's okay to pivot. Pivoting is good. Yeah. But that personal development blog, he mastered all his SEO skills. And yeah, and so writing it, skills. I, I call it, in one of the posts, I call it the creator game. You're playing a game and it's like the content creation, the constant learning, the constant networking and developing your promotional skills is going to help you in any business you do in the future, any job, any business. So it's a constant kind of, if you keep playing that game, you're going to level up your skills regardless of how it ends up. Yeah, I, I, I love that analogy. Pecky, like not boring, wrote this post yes. on the great online game. I think Tim Urban from Wait But Why calls it Grand Theft Life, <laughs> which is yes. also really nice. Yeah. It's in the Adam who post the chef and the cook or something. Um, yeah, I love that analogy, and it's actually one of the uh, one of these uh, frames I have for this learning um, a bit more about how to win <laughs> at the great uh, online game, because this is what I feel is uh, missing from, for example, Pecky's post. Right, he's talking about it, and he's talking about people who are winning, but he's not going into how, how do we actually win, and I think that's fascinating. And there there are completely new playbooks now emerging. And I, like you said, like the, there are all these different components you, you got to master and you slowly level up. And it's just a very useful frame of mind. I think you have that in your post. Like the key is to just treat it as a game. There are no guaranteed returns. Yeah. So you better have fun. And yeah, you can do cool stuff like gamify it for yourself. Think about, okay, I have these skill. You have a skill. What is here in the skill tree? That's a useful um, exercise right what skills are important and then how do i level up yeah I lo at least i love thinking like that and it always motivates me <laughs> yeah same thing with my like newsletter my idea economy newsletter it's not making any money yet and it's slowly consistently growing but like every day like every week that i publish the newsletter i learn a lot i connect with a lot of new people i'm building an audience slowly like these are all things that I can't lose. It's it's all beneficial. A lot of people always say, oh, you're so lucky you get these ideas, you get these opportunities all the time. It's not luck. I put in the, t of course, there's a serendipity part of it that comes in. If you're in the right place at the right time, an opportunity will come to you. But if you're playing the game all the time, that's how you get opportunities. If you're not playing, if you're not trying, nobody knows exactly. to contact you. You have no connections. You have, there, there's zero chance. So I don't think it's a game you play to win. I think it's just a game you play for the sake of playing it's it's that's where the enjoyment comes from that's where the learning comes from the infinite yeah it, yes. <laughs> it's an infinite game the infinite game yeah totally agree and it's funny because <laughs> another coincidence i'm right now i'm working on a huge blog post about engineering serendipity because this is one of the things i really want to focus on because i did a great job, I think, doing this 2020 and 2021, I, I stopped <laughs> and it, I think it was a mistake. So I'm back at it and there are really cool things you can do to bring luck into your life. As you, as you put it, writing a newsletter, obviously is an amazing way of doing this because what, what mo most people don't realize is that people quickly forget that other people exist <laughs> and like the opportunities uh, are usually sent to people who are top of mind. If you yesterday talked to a friend and today you see something cool, you send him a message. Hey, I, I just saw this. And having a newsletter, a weekly newsletter is just a great way to stay top of mind and sending these little postcards. It's the same on Twitter, right? Every day I'm posting a little update. Hey, this is what I'm doing right now. The goal with these postcards is not to go viral. It's just to signal I'm still here <laughs> and yeah. people see my face and you stay in the conversation and uh, 
top of mind. And yeah, you get just um, cool messages, cool people reaching out, opportunities find you. And yeah, <laughs> that's a whole nother topic, but it's really cool and really fun to think about how you can bring luck into your life. And yeah, newsletter. <laughs> I also have my personal one and it's not making any money. I write it only for that purpose. It's funny because like last week after we chatted, I, I came across your, your content twice. I saw your, your Twitter post on Trump from um, The Hustle. And also, I think Colonel mentioned you as well, too, that you're a big exactly. contributor to the community. <laughs> so so it's, it's just like twice I, I came across you just on from other people re recommending your content. Yeah, suddenly I'm back. <laughs> yes, you're <laughs> back. A, a few people <laughs> have mentioned this. Yeah, no. No idea what Jacob discovered. Is he back on coffee? <laughs> <laughs> the rumors. No, I, I just decided to bring more luck into my life. And this means, for example, saying yes to all kinds of meetings. If people reach out, I, I always say yes. Okay, let's grab a coffee. Why not? <laughs> yeah. and sometimes uh, uh, cool stuff comes out of it. For example, like this shout out in the kernel newsletter because Joel and I hopped on a call a few times and brainstorming, just chatting. <laughs> this is how, how cool stuff happens. Now back to, to Fiverr. And I think, yeah, this Viper Chill post really started something because afterward, I saw quite a few people having success with similar services. And Glenn did it with SEO. And I think he also had a few examples of people who copied this model and it also worked well. And yeah, obviously there's a huge market, but there are more. One example is Oli, I don't know his sec, uh, <laughs> second name Meetings. actually, but yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Is he the just, landing page I just, guy? <laughs> yeah, I was just, I was actually, it's funny. I was just talking to him yesterday as well too, <laughs> connected by email. It's funny how it's all connected. Small world. <laughs> yes, yes. The internet's still a will it. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so like, like, and that's another great example, like Ollie just bought he bought like a, a newsletter that was abandoned by i forget his name ankit something or other was running this doing these landing page teardowns basically and ollie bought this and it's like if it's perfect synergy with his roast my landing page service which is like a very narrow service and if you build an audience and you get people that are interested in that it's like, yeah i can see that that could be a very successful business yeah, just for people who don't know who Ollie is, he's basically the landing page guy. So this is his positioning and he's selling landing page audits. And yeah, he's doing smart marketing stuff like offering free audits on Indie Hacker sometimes, or he did it and this is how he got started. And now he's charging. I actually didn't know how much he's charging per audit. I think it... 249 pounds. Oh, that's not too bad. And do you know how long it takes him to do one of these? It's I, I believe it's less than an hour. It's a video kind of um, real time audience. Yeah, yeah. So it's uh, and I believe it's less than an hour that he takes to do these things. But I'm, I'm I'm sure he does a little bit of preparation before he gets on the video, just he knows what's going on the page. But um, let's see, let's see. Even if it's two or three hours, he's still making pretty good money there for those audits. Yeah, it's solid <laughs> at the very least. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's that's another cool example of these. Yeah, like audits are a pretty sweet niche within this niche of productized services. And just today I, I had an idea because I was talking to my friends who I'm, I'm doing treats on demand with. And someone, Anthony actually mentioned a friend hired someone just to rewrite his Twitter bio. <laughs> that's insane but there's a market and if you think or two about twitter the bio is important right you don't have a lot of space so optimizing it is something you should do mm -hmm. and it's an art and yeah on the topic of audits for example twitter profile audit could be a, a very simple niche to test <laughs> one idea I, I just had yeah i think that's a great idea actually because even i have trouble with my bio like i I have to go through and systematically do it. Like I just, most people just put it up and don't even touch it. I haven't updated my bio in, I don't know, since I started the newsletter, basically. I don't think I've changed much on there for a long time, like a year and a half. And I didn't even put any thought into it. I just wrote something up there quickly. I can't imagine that my bio is converting very effectively. So <laughs> it would, if you did a more systematic kind of approach to those things, I think it could be very successful. It's a great idea. Yeah, you have these different elements. You have the cover image, mm -hmm. the bio, the location, the URL, 
um, the website you put in there, and also the pinned tweet and your profile image. So <laughs> there's there's quite a few elements you can play around with, and yeah. <laughs> I, I think I think I think I shared a link a couple of weeks ago about a, a lady that was doing the Twitter header images, and she was she was charging a couple hundred dollars, but she was like a, a really good illustrator that can do. She gets into your personality and what the topic is about, and does these really in depth kind of like header profile images that were quite good. So like that kind of service I could, and she was doing really well with them. She was getting, cause she turned it into a, a good business, like a six figure business or something. I, I she like, I, I can't remember the link offhand, but I, I do recall that last a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. So every, that's... like, that's the thing is like, everybody wants to, to be the next Facebook or LinkedIn or, or crypto platform or something, but it's starting from very small beginnings. It's probably the easiest way to go because it really narrows your focus. And so if you're doing like Twitter bios, it's pretty easy to find your audience and it's pretty easy to prove that you're good at your service and it's pretty easy to get those skills. So it's, that's a good direction to go. I like those kind of ideas. Yeah, me too. This is exactly <laughs> uh, the kind of idea I love because literally, yeah. Anyone can pull it off. You don't need like some network or funding. You can just do it and you, there's zero risk. <laughs> That's also yeah. the really cool thing. You can, you just need some hustle, reach out to people, do it for free until you get some testimonials and then grow from there. It's, it's very straightforward. So <laughs> if someone wants to, someone wants to rewrite our Twitter bios, please reach, please reach out. <laughs> yeah, um, they definitely actually... need work. <laughs> Again, I don't have the link here, but I came across because I, I, I did a deep dive into, into Roast My Landing Page before, and I was looking into that market a little bit. If your resource database is presented in a nice Notion database, it can go on, it can be on Product Hunt and get tons of upvotes. But if it's just like a listing of resources in on a WordPress page, then it doesn't count. It can't go on there because it's not cool enough. And so that, that presentation is important. Yeah, they banned Airtable products actually but if you're using for example whatever like one of these wrappers around a table that make the design a bit a bit nicer it's okay <laughs> you won't get shadow banned yeah weird policy but so so they but they know nominated me as maker of the year i'm again a fan <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> my beef is settled. I won't say anything negative about them ever again. <laughs> I gotta put that in my cover image on Twitter bio. <laughs> yes, there you go. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Social proof on your website. Yeah, um, I actually have a brag page <laughs> on my website where this kind of stuff ends up. <laughs> so let's get back to Fiverr to your post. I also have a few notes and like the, the standard playbook or the, the most straightforward strategy would be just to go on Fiverr, find out what's working and then spin it off as a premium offering. And you, you have a few great examples like million dollar headlines or some uh, copywriting, whatever. Yeah, services. Yeah. If you saw the newsletter today, I think I have another one. There's another lady is do has done like eighty ninety thousand dollars a month. She had a ninety thousand dollar month doing copywriting services on off of Fiverr, and so it's people are building like half million dollar businesses off of these services. So it's it could be anything, but you know I don't know if you have to take it off of Fiverr anymore. If you can like get the um, get the snowball rolling that that build some momentum and get maybe get all your friends to buy your gig first so you get the first 10 reviews or something and then have a low enough price to attract people in away from the, the uh, more established sellers and then slowly raise your prices you could it's probably a viable model just to use mark uh, just to use fiber as your distribution channel because getting that distribution is hard you, it's the you, hardest like part some, yeah yeah, so something like roast my landing page, for example, like Oliver was, he, he was on Indie Hackers and he was posting for, and he does a lot of work to get that initial traction. Maybe now he's starting to get some, some search engine rankings and, and getting some traffic online by himself. But a lot of that, there's, there's a big grind involved in that. So if you have some type of uh, distribution channel like Fiverr, or even like the new LinkedIn gig marketplace too, that might even be a better place to go because the prices are higher and it's probably less competitive than Fiverr. It's, um, I, I still think you need a way to reach customers. And, and so you, you probably make less money, but it's uh, there's a built-in distribution there. Yeah, that's a great point that now 
that Fiverr is also offering or allowing more expensive services, it, it totally makes sense to, to offer yeah, <laughs> your premium services just on Fiverr. And I just had a look and the cut is actually reasonable. This is always what people are complaining about, 20%, which sounds a lot, but they also give you a lot. They give you distribution. They bring you the traffic, um, all the sales you otherwise probably would not have made. And just for comparison, you know what Amazon's cut is? If you're selling books or digital stuff on Amazon, they take up to 60% or 65%. So 20% sounds unreasonable to me, but yeah, I, good point. I, I had a friend that, that used Upwork to get all his, his consulting clients and all his kind of service. He, was, he did like marketing consulting. And basically he would uh, apply for all these jobs, but he wouldn't take the job. He would convince the person that you don't need this job. What you need me to do is I can do this. So he used it as a way to sell himself and sell higher end services. You don't need a content writer. You need someone that's going to take over your all online marketing for you and handle all this. And if you hire me, I can do this. So he used Upwork just as a way to get interviews with people. And it, it was very effective for him. And he was doing really well with that. So I, I think there's, yeah, finding the, a way to, to use the platforms to your advantage is very important. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> and because an, another idea when I thought about the issue, about the topic is that I think there is a lack for something like Gumroad, but for productized services, because turns out that Gumroad actually does not allow services <laughs> to be sold. And so if you don't want to sell on a platform like Fiverr or Upwork, you actually have to figure out how to handle payments and these kind of uh, things yourself, taxes. So I looked into it and didn't find a good solution. And I did research because, yeah, Tweets on Demand <laughs> is a productized service experiment. And I would love to use something. And <laughs> so I think that's an opportunity. But if you can do it, of course, staying on Fiverr makes sense because they actually take some work off your shoulders, I think. Yes. I think another big opportunity is taking a lot of these services or even the, not even services, but even like coaching gigs, freelancing work and, and, but making local platforms. Cause I think I, I'm talking to a lot of people. A lot of people want to meet in person. We're moving to a remote work world, but if you're a larger company, you want to hire someone to for like a $20,000 project to do your marketing for your business for the next six months. You don't want to hire someone on Upwork that you never meet or, or, or hire. So you're not going to hire someone on Fiverr, for example. I doubt if, if the big Fortune 500 companies are searching on Fiverr to hire people to fill vacancies, right? So it's if you had something local where they could actually meet and you can put together teams, like maybe like a Hollywood movie, for example, you get your actors and your and the cameraman and the lighting guys and the rig guys and whatever you need for to make a movie and you bring them together for these short projects. Doing those things on a local basis too could be very um, attractive. I think there's a market for that, especially for, like, I talked to coaches and, and um, fitness coaches and, and freelancers and designers, and everybody's always asking, how can I promote myself? How can I promote myself? Because it's tough to get to stand out. And so most of it is word of mouth, but if you had local little networks of creatives, basically, that you can say, okay, here's all the um, fitness coaches in Montreal. Here's all the uh, graphic designers in Montreal. Here's all the web developers in Montreal, here's all the React developers, then you can, and they can have their pro previous projects, you can have directories of all these people. And so you can hire locally, which I think is going to be a big push as, as we move more to remote work and people are going to Thailand and to Bali and uh, want to work abroad. I think there's more companies are going to say, no, I want you to be local so we can meet every couple of weeks and go over everything in person. So I think there's going to be some reverse remote work backlash there sometime. Yeah, that's that's a great observation that whenever you have a trend, you also have the, the, the anti-movement or usually everyone is moving into the metaverse at the, at the same time, people want more, want to live in nature <laughs> and decouple from technology. and yeah, in the same way, you have remote work and the movement in the opposite direction. So yeah, I really like that. And I was just thinking 
if anything like that already exists. And obviously for like handyman for like it exists, at least here in Denmark, I hired a guy <laughs> on a platform like that. And I paid some money to, he, he just installed the lamps. <laughs> so it was like a productized local service, sweet, sweet gig. And yeah, it was a marketplace like this handy hand it's called, but yeah, it totally makes sense that this would work for digital services or any kind of services. I think if you're like the, like a, a plumber in, in, in Denmark, for example, you probably don't think about, I need someone to write content for my website, right? You're probably not thinking, oh, there must be marketplaces. I can go to Fiverr. I can go to Upwork. I can do the, it, th those probably, those sites are probably not in their minds at all. They don't care about online business. They don't care about building websites. They're just, they do plumbing work, right? They're, it's, I think that we take a lot of the stuff for granted because we live it 24 hours a day. But I think uh, most people, especially people that are making money, are probably not spending so much time playing around with social media and on Twitter and Facebook and all this stuff. They're out there building their business. So it's like, if you can find ways to reach those people locally where they're going to see over and over again and say, okay, all the handymen are on this particular platform and this is where everybody's hiring from. So I need to be on this platform. Like it, it's a different kind of selling pitch. It's much easier to get clients that way. Agreed. It probably would require some hustle <laughs> to get things going yes. to actually onboard people. But yeah, totally makes sense. Any other niches you found interesting when you looked at the data? Because I remember you actually looked at all the categories, all the top selling gigs, right? Yeah. Well, I have a database. There's, I, I made a database that, available to everybody who subscribes to the newsletter. So basically people can go through there and see all, what all the top selling products are. But I, it's really surprising what is successful. Like people doing like Jesus videos, <laughs> doing narrations <laughs> from Jesus and, and they, can, they, can, if they can sell. People want a message from Jesus. And usually it's humorous, but or like Donald Trump impersonations or all of these obscure things. For example, like, like manga is really big, like Japanese. My wife is Japanese, so we've been watching a lot of manga. But if you did anything, like if, if you were a good impersonator and you could do Luffy's voice, the main character for One Piece, and do messages for teenagers for birthday presents, those kind of things, all you could do, the, most, the more extreme, the more likely it, it, could, it probably could, could, could succeed because people are going to the margins. And so I think like, uh, actually what another really cool company that I, that I think is the next big thing is Mischief. Have you been following Mischief? I think I've seen it, but I don't remember the details. <laughs> so basically it's spelled M-S-C-H-F. If you type that in, you'll probably come up to your site, but they basically do these, these drops of products every like week or two weeks. And then they've sold things like the rubber chicken bomb. It's a rubber chicken that also doubles as a bomb. They've got like Jesus shoes, like they get holy water inside shoes. They did Satan shoes. It's like got real live blood inside the shoes. And they do all these things. A, a recent project was where they're copying luxury shopping bags because everybody wants to go shopping and have all the Louis Vuitton and Chanel and all these fancy shopping bags. But instead of actually going and, and buying it at stores, they just sell the bags only. And so they're trying to invite all these companies to sue them for like copyright infringement, trademark infringements. And so they do all these things that get a lot of press, a lot of attention, and it's working for them. Like they, they can sell a lot of stuff. They had this one one project it was that you buy these boxes and you don't know what's inside you could get it could be worth seven thousand dollars or it could be worth zero dollars but one thing is if you buy it and don't open it and return it like three months later they will give you a thousand dollars if you don't open the box and just return it and so they do these like crazy stunts that get huge amounts of press and it's, they're building a business out of it. They've done like something like 40 or 50 of these launches. And so you can see it with places like Supreme and all these t-shirt brands and things that are, they're doing, that's what the NFT craze is. You, you do these drops for a limited time only. If you don't get in now, you're going to miss it. And you get like teenagers spending a thousand dollars on running shoes and, and or, or hooded jerseys. And so it's like, you get this re really intense scarcity of these rare kind of interesting projects 
but they take it to an extreme. I think we're in peak everything. That's the way I look at it. If you look like the AI copywriting services, I thought, oh, the AI copywriting service, this is a cool idea. Now there's 60 or 70 of them. There's different companies. Like how do you go and choose which AI copywriting service you're gonna use when there's 60 or 70 and there's probably a new one coming up every two weeks? Because it's anybody can basically take this technology and build a business off of it, but it, it's very hard to make money from it for the long term because there's just so much competition in every niche. So the, the, the real secret of all these things is understanding how to play into the meme culture and build these things that go viral in a short time. And, and you just have to do crazy stunts all the time, basically, if you want to succeed in, in a lot of business. And I think that's what a lot of like NFTs are, and that's what a lot of these culture products are. Because it, nobody needs to spend a thousand dollars on a pair of running shoes. Like I, I, I don't care how cool the running shoes are. There's spending a thousand dollars. To me, I don't get it. I'm a minimalist, and I would never spend a thousand dollars on a pair of running shoes. But if you're like a teenager, maybe in in a trendy city, and and you show up with these thousand dollar running shoes or something, that maybe you're the coolest kid in the block. So it's those kind of things are are catching on. Yeah, uh, super fascinating. And you got this effect that there is the first mover advantage, right? With copy.ai, they, they are killing it, but their product, in my opinion, is not very good. So, and they have no real competitive advantage other than they brand, they, their brand that they started early and did a very good job at marketing by exploiting the built-in public playbook, basically just sharing the, the hockey stick grows in the early days, because this is what gets clicked and what gets liked on Twitter. So they did it in a smart way, but yeah, they, like anyone can, can build like these copywriting tools in a weekend or even two hours. It's super easy once you have access and now I have access. But back when they were doing it, there was this waiting list and this is what protected them. <laughs> that's, uh, that's all, right? Because um, it's, it, at the beginning, it was really just an API uh, and a very ugly wrapper around the GPT-3 API. And that was it. And now they actually moved to their custom models because turns out GPT-3 is expensive. <laughs> so it's hard to make money because... They always only shared MRR, their revenue, but never their profits. So I was mm -hmm. always very curious what their bill, their, their bill, their GPT-3 and OpenAI bill actually looked like. So what's the profit? But yeah, they got a lot of funding now on the back of all the hype. And I building custom models, but in my opinion, the quality of the output has gotten noticeably worse. And this has happened with a few of these AI products that they start strong by when they are still using GPT-3 and the product is working quite well. But then, yeah, <laughs> it's time to earn money or for other reasons, they switch to custom models. And yeah, it's, it's far from trivial to build a model like GPT-3, obviously. So <laughs> tough not to, uh, to crack yeah. and yeah, very interesting. And yeah, like marketing is really what's that different products apart in this noisy world. How many of these <laughs> AI writers are there now? It's insane, but it's also interesting yeah. that there are all these niches, right? For example, one guy built one just laser focused on product descriptions, <laughs> super smart. And obviously you can do better things if you niche down. You can fine tune the model and build better prompts and yeah, yeah that's good. Cool. That's, that's what I, I mentioned that in the, in the unbundling fiber article as well too. I think there's a lot of opportunities if you can automate the your productized service gigs with AI somehow. If you're doing marketing slogans for websites or taglines for websites, and you had an AI tool to help you do this, it wouldn't be so hard for you to pump off like 10 different slogans for a company if you get their main what do you want to say what are your main benefits that you're offering your customers and then you pump those into an ai engine and have this computer spit this thing out in 10 minutes rather than you thinking about it for an hour so i think there's a lot of there's a lot of ways you can leverage those fiber gigs with ai if you had a focus service like your friend service there absolutely yeah agreed and one example i wrote about a few weeks ago is naming Right, the naming niche, which is wild. There are the story of a teenager in the UK making, I don't know, 
hundreds of thousands of dollars name, naming Chinese babies or something. <laughs> And yeah. also like starter story, this project by Pat Waltz. And I did some research and it turns out that a huge percentage of his traffic, his incredible traffic is coming from people looking for names. They want to know how can I name a boutique business? How can I name a fashion brand? And I... Didn't do the math what the exact number is, but it's incredible. Like I would say 50% of his traffic is just coming from these terms. And it's very easy like to, to churn out these pages. And he's very open about it, that he basically just copies a bunch of stuff together. This is his whole approach and this programmatic SEO. And it, like volume is the name of the game. You just um, put up tons of pages with just okay content. And yeah, that's how you win um, that game. But obviously you can do a batch, much better job, solve this problem in a much better way if you yeah, actually give people more than just a static list of names. And one way of doing this very effectively is leveraging something like GPT-3. You can have a little productized service. If someone wants a brand name, a business name, whatever. And they just give you a little description, a little pitch on what they have in mind. And you feed this into GPT-3 and do some manual curation, obviously, because sometimes GPT-3 <laughs> puts out nonsense. But then, yeah, you put this in a few times, pick the best names and send back a list of 10. So that, that's a cool gig. And you can do this for all kinds of niches, like naming startups, naming babies. I can't remember, but a few people actually sent me cool ideas after I sent out the email. And they're actually experts charging, I don't know, $500 or so per hour, just helping people name stuff. So obviously this is yeah. and like the, the most famous example, of course, is marketing agencies helping Pepsi named the new Pepsi or stuff like that for hundreds mm -hmm. of thousands of dollars. So yeah. that's the very tall of the end. But yeah. A related business that I saw that I thought was pretty cool is that they, they sell domain names along with the names and the logo. It's like they, they do a package. They, they, brand they bucket. Buy a, is it brand bucket? Yeah. I, but it, yeah. but that was, I think that was a very cool idea because it, like you could buy a whole package. Like you get the name. Already a, a decent looking logo, maybe it's not, not customized to what you would want, but it's good enough for if you're a small business just starting off so you don't have to waste your time and, and mental power looking into that kind of stuff. And then you get the a URL, because buying URLs is a big pain too, right? Because if you, that's even the bigger problem, not the name, because you've got to see if the URL is available and trying to find some kind of variation that you can make it work for yourself. So if you can get like a decent URL and a decent name and a logo, like, taking it up the value chain and offering like more comprehensive services would be a good idea as well. Yeah. And coming back full circle, Glenn actually wrote about brand bucket on Viper chill. I think this is where he bought like his new domains, gaps.com and detailed.com. And he has this one post how buying a domain for, I don't know how much money revealed incredible opportunity or something along these lines as his headline, super cool post, but this is how I learned about brand bucket and yeah, a, a funny story. I actually owned the domain brandnames.ai because I, I had the idea of building basically brand bucket, but just with AI generated names, a more personalized version with AI ideas. And it's actually not so hard idea, uh, not so hard of an idea and basically got it working, but never launched it so far. <laughs> I should do that. I'm still, I, I guess what I always try to figure out is the correct model, how I can, how can I can really do this in a way that provides value, but also it's not a huge headache for me. And this is where I got stuck because very expensive, custom models suck and hosting them is a huge pain anyway. So I guess the correct angle would be to start with a little productized service. People, like I said, people put in the pitch and I use my, my, my algorithm to find the names and check their domains and send it back to them. That could be a cool side hustle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, get search tools to do that. I mean, another, um, just one second. Can I talk later? I'm on a call, JJC. 
sorry. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> He doesn't understand that idea of what I'm on a call. <laughs> uh, now I forget my, my train of thought there. Um, oh, Brandon, I'm sorry, I, I lost my train of thought there. No, no, no problem. There. And I mean, actually, sorry. Actually, one more idea too, like, like getting back to the other idea, like one of the, not sure, but one of the best entrepreneurs in our space is like Peter Levels. Of course. And to have that story and just building projects all the time and just doing cool things like having that story and brand, it's kind of very related to the mischief kind of thing. Having that story and that brand and that kind of, he's, he's almost like a celebrity kind of status now. And so anything that he does will be supported just because it's him. And I think that's what makes a big, that, that, that's what makes a lot of these ideas stand out is if Peter Levels is behind it, okay, like I want to move to Portugal. And so you get these kind of, I think you need to do more than just be one of the 60 AI kind of GP3, GPT3 kind of platforms out there. You need to get one, like for example, Peter Levels is what one, one did. What was his AI generated thing? He was coming up early Ideas on. Ideasai.net. Ideasai.net. Yes. And I think you got a little bit of publicity with that. And I was subscribed to that for a little while. And so anything that he does is interesting because there's a personality behind it, a story behind it. I think that's a bigger part of business success. When there's so much competition now, you need to stand out beyond just the idea because the idea is pretty, anybody can copy the idea. If you, any idea you mention that's good, it's going to probably get about 20 or 30 different imitators in the next couple of months, right? Yeah. And I guess this really brings us back to the whole idea of the great online game. Like, how do you do that? And yes. this is what I've been studying for the past few weeks or because I, I want to get better at it. And there are certain things you can definitely do. And there are common patterns if you study people like him. And for example, I, I, like I put out this tweet about Trung, but today I put out a tweet about Harry Dry. And I, I read actually, and he has a similar status. Um, not quite at the same level, but um, he's, he's in a similar bucket that in the sense that he has quite a few sub, super friends. He has a story and everything he puts out, he has people rooting for him. Basically, that's the thing. And one key element is that these people have an origin story, right? Batman. <laughs> and for Peter, this was his 12 startups in 12 months experiment which is where all of his reputation came from because yeah everyone who has ever tried to build an audience knows that getting the first 100 1000 subscribers is the hardest part and the best way to jump over that hurdle is to have a very good origin story and peter has 12 in 12 and harry for example has the kanye story right? Which mm -hmm. is this blog post, which he put on a separate domain, Kanye, the Kanye story.com. And it's basically just a write up of how he tried to launch a dating site for Kanye West fans and it failed, but he got into some conversation with the manager. And yeah, this really put him on the map. He was a nobody and then he was somebody. Everyone who read this piece immediately knows, okay, this is a young hustler marketing and he's sharing his learnings and of course er everyone anyone can put these attributes in his twitter bio but this is not going to convince anyone <laughs> this is not how it works but yeah show not uh, show don't tell is the motto obviously and this is how you do it and there are different like categories within the theme of having an origin story you can do and do a crazy stunt like harry dry you can do an experiment like peter levels or which is also what I did. I did it with my bootstrap MBA for that very reason. I studied it and I understood it and it worked magically. This is how I went from zero to, I don't know, 300 subscribers. And there are many other examples. For example, Daniel Vassallo, um, who's now <laughs> selling his courses, his Twitter courses, but the big secret, okay, it's not really a secret, is that he got his first 3000 followers from one blog post that he wrote. He put it on Medium and it went viral. And this is how we went from zero. He was just some random engineer at Amazon who quit his job to Twitter personality. And suddenly he can 
do these cohort courses, sell uh, uh, almost anything. He's selling, he's, he's, he got into woodworking and now <laughs> selling little cutting boards or whatever, and people are buying it for 200 bucks. Yeah. So this, this really proves it. And yeah, it, it's another great example of the origin story because it's titled Only Intrinsic Motivation Lasts. And it's why he quit his job at Amazon and his plan, what he's doing. And it's funny, I have a, I actually have a, have a, have a database <laughs> of these origin stories. I'm a collector. That's yeah, a funny tangent. <laughs> yeah, I, I have a little bit of a different take on that. Like, like, so, like, like Harry, I'm a huge fan of Harry Dry as well. But he is, he puts a lot of work into his content. And his content is way better than anything else I've seen. Like his format of the before and after pics. That's perfect for, for in, in blog posts. He, he put massive amounts of time in promoting on indie hackers and on Reddit. He goes in all these communities and he's like the quality of his posts are so good. Like his recent copy, um, copywriting examples. He basically did the, I, I forget what it was called, but basically, uh, do you know what it's called? Copy mar something with marketing in there, copy marketing or something it's called. But his most recent um, thing that was on Product Hunt and he got tons of upvotes, but it's basically a collection of, of taglines and, and good copy from different websites. But the way he presents his information is very unique too, because he puts in a lot more effort. It's not like a um, marginal effort. It's not like you write a long form content, but it's like it's long form content that's like with great design and massive promotion behind it. He'll go on Indie Hackers and every, like you, in the Indie Hackers um, newsletters, you still see his old posts from, from a year and a half ago. He's reposting them again and, and getting promotion again from his old ideas, like the, the how to do a landing page and all these basic ideas that were that works a year ago or a year and a half ago. He's reposting them to these platforms and he's starting again and leveraging in that audience. So like it's, it's I, I, I agree that there's like having, Working on good ideas, but also promoting it very effectively is like that to me is this. I, I don't know if I would call that an origin story. I, I, I call it a big idea. The way I, I call them big ideas, like uh, for example, the ship thirty and thirty, with with Dicky. What was it? What's his name? Dicky Bush. What, what's his last? Dicky Bush. Like that's a genius idea, right? It's just it's just or another one is Jack Butcher and his build once, sell twice idea. Like he was doing these images online. And they're really cool images. It's black and white, it's simple, blah, blah, blah. But then he gets picked up, he, he does it from a famous guy, I forget who he copied there. He did he did the breakdown of a famous venture capitalist. Do you know who I'm talking about? What's the guy? Naval Rabicans, yeah. Was it Naval's? So he did Naval's post and Naval retweets it and then he puts it into to, to uh, startup. Like you get, you immediately get tens of thousands of followers. And like, I've, I've been following all these guys. I think you mentioned this already too almost everybody can attribute their success to like three or five kind of big posts, like maybe Twitter posts or blog posts or whatever it is. It's only a handful that account for 95% of their followers and traffic and, and subscribers. But the thing they don't mention is they, they put out hundreds and hundreds to find out which those three or five is. So it's a constant game of leveling up and playing and trying and doing different things and connecting that gets them taken to a different level. Like in the case of like Trung and Steph, sure, they're, they're very smart and very talented people, but working for The Hustle and getting promoted in The Hustle's newsletter of, of 1.5 million subscribers sure helps a lot too. It's not just an origin story. It's like it, they found a good distribution channel to get their message out to the world. Jack Butcher did it through like Naval Ravikant and, and getting mentioned by this guy. And, and like, if you do those things often enough, you're going to get lucky once in a while and you're going to get a share. You're going to get somebody big to follow you, somebody to promote your content. So it's, you have to constantly do really good work with um, really distinctive ideas that stand out and you have to um, be lucky and you get lucky by doing it long enough and trying enough different things. Yeah, that's the tricky part of the 80-20 everyone talks about that you never know yes. which which is the 20. Yeah. But no, what, what I was trying to say is that if you are at zero and if you want to go from zero to 100 or 1000 or whatever, um, the first level is, then I think having a compelling origin story is a very effective strategy. Obviously, mm -hmm. not everyone has used it, but it's a very common pattern. It worked for me, it worked for Peter, it worked for Harry, it worked for Daniel and many others. 
And of course, you're not sad afterward, right? Afterward, the fun really just begins, but getting off the ground, which is super, super hard. Yeah, I think this is what people should attempt to do. And yeah, just having a lens or whatever you want to call it, where you can bundle your efforts and see the world through and which gives you an excuse to reach out to people, whatever, because you need that. It's another way of looking at this origin story, right? You, because, yeah, maybe that's a better phrase, like a lens. I, I got that from Sebastian Marshall. Yeah, having a lens, for example, for me, having this bootstrap MBA lens was very effective because... People understand what this guy wants. So he's not trying to sell me something. He's actually trying to learn something. This is why he's reaching out and it's working. But yeah, afterward, um, like there are these different levels, right? In the game, getting from zero and then you can hustle a little. But if you really want to wanna reach the, the highest levels, you, you need to get known for one thing, obviously. But the tricky thing is, and David Perel talks about, he calls it the personal monopoly or something. The problem is that I see so many people putting the, the guy into their Twitter bio and it's not doing anything. It's not working. This is not how it works. And it didn't work for David Perel that way. He just did a bunch of stuff and then noticed that the writing stuff is resonating and this is how he became the writing guy. And the mm -hmm. same is true for Jack Butcher and everyone else. They didn't start with a grand plan. Okay, I'm going to become <laughs> this and that because you never know how the market responds or what's mm -hmm. going to resonate or what you actually enjoy doing in the long term. So I rather like the idea of letting your personal monopoly emerge by just yeah, putting a bunch of stuff out there and then observing what works and what doesn't and then doubling down. And this is how you find your niche, your thing. And you, you can't force it. And if you're trying to force it, it, it will go wrong, almost certainly. For example, like in, in for Idea Economy, I've written four original articles for this. Well, like Unbundling Fiber is one of them. So I've written four original articles for the site so far. And they've accounted for four or 500 of my subscribers, right? I think they've, it's just like four. So it, writing original content and trying to be somewhat controversial or saying something different or, or having the unbundling fiber with the goal was that to be a comprehensive post that would get backlinks. And so I got a lot of backlinks from that. And so all of those things, doing those kind of things pays off over time. If you do that long enough, what's the big, I, I can't, I'm losing all my names here. Well, the, the one that just sold the SEM, SEM backlinko. The, the yeah, David, Brian Dean. Which, Brian Dean from Backlinko, right? Just sold his, his, sites to um, SEM rush like there's that is a lot of hard work that's just grind like grinding it out on super long form content that ranks it's so good that it beats everybody else in the rankings that's the that's the secret is you do something really good for a really long time and that's how you succeed it's it's a lot of this is not rocket science it's you just got to put in the the, the the grind for a long time and so harry dry is the same way to me anyways like he puts in a lot of work i can imagine those posts taking 40 or 50 hours to do because it's like even the way he color codes it he, he uses those like that light green and the light pink colors to, to to highlight the different texts i'm seeing like a half a dozen people copying that format and it's working like on indie hackers there's a few people copying that format now and they're getting traffic because it looks really good and it's just a really good idea so Cop taking a big idea like that and just and making it your own a little bit can, can um, works over time. It works over time. Same thing with Dickie Bush and the ship 30 for 30. There was another takeoff on the, on the 12 startups in 12 months. Somebody did that. I think it was called the Bootstrap. Not, not your site, but do you know who did that one? They, 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 they had a project to do 12 startups in 12 months. A few people, but no. But it was a good idea. Like they got like a hundred people to sign up and pay like a hundred bucks for it. So they made a little bit of money. I think it fizzled out over time because it, it's it's hard to do 12 startups in 12 months. And so not many people are going to finish that cohort. So it's, but the idea is just, it's such a good idea that resonates with people. So if you can be a, a collector of those ideas, like you say, you are you're building a database. It's very cool. Another big one is... Um, Nathan and I, I, I don't know why my all my uh, <laughs> my mind is a blank right now of everybody. But he does a daily po SaaS podcast. Like he, I have a post on him on Medium too. I call the the marketing genius of, of Nathan Laka. Like he is, his ideas are so smart. It's it's brilliant. Like he wrote a book. 
And in order to, to make this book a bestseller, he contacted all these big companies and say, I'll mention this. If you, if you I'll, I'll mention this early in the book, if you buy a whole bunch of copies and, and um, pay to get inside this book. So he, he turned it into a bestseller by contacting people and putting them in his book. He made these, he played off the, the, the ego of all these CEOs that wanted to be more famous, right? So it's, if you have a smart idea like that behind your basic business plan, it helps a lot. A lot of people don't start with a, a solid idea. And so everybody says execution is important. It's the pivot. You've got to experiment and try things. But if, if you're starting with a weak idea, it makes this whole business formation thing a much more difficult. So like starting with a good idea is, is important, I think. Yeah, it's, that's kind it, of like, it, <laughs> that's the impetus between behind idea, idea economy. Because like a lot of people are say like ideas are nothing. It's all execution. Yes, execution is important. But it's, if you're starting with a bad idea, it's pretty hard to make it succeed. You can be, you'll be pushing a giant boulder up the hill forever. But if you have something with momentum, people call it like, like product market fit. When you have something that it just hits and starts connecting with people, that's a good idea. And it just naturally starts flowing. And sometimes you have to experiment to find that. And sometimes it can be engineered because some people seem to be doing good at doing that over and over again. Like either Peter Levels has got that intuition that, or the, the, the cult of personality or whatever it is behind him because it seems like he's, he's a bit of both. A step there. <laughs> yes. And um, so it's, it's the execution, it's the good ideas, and it's constantly trying new things. And it's, it's like playing on the mimetic desires of people. Like there, you, you have to be really good at getting memes out into the public, right? Trung from Hustle is, he has some really funny, good memes that spread very easily. So it's, if you have a distribution channel like the Hustle that promotes you, and you have good ideas, you're unstoppable. Like, like I, can, I can see him having a billion followers in, in a relatively short time because he just that, he's that good. He's got the distribution channel nailed down. Yeah, we should, we should repeat this another time because I got to run, unfortunately. Okay. But I, I, I really enjoyed this. And just funny, another funny coincidence because actually Nathan Lutger was one of the first people I studied as part of my bootstrap MBA. And I also have a huge post on his strategies. And yeah, he actually retweeted it back in the days and this added, I don't know, I think it doubled my follow accounts at the time. That's not a funny coincidence. And yeah, super cool. There's so much to learn, I think, from people who are winning at the great yes, online game. Yeah. That's my frame. <laughs> and yeah, we should do this another time and just chat about people who are winning at the great online game and what they're doing, how they're doing. I think that's a cool topic in itself. I'd like to share databases of all the people you got and all the people I got to see how many are the same. It's <laughs> one thing that's very interesting to me is like of the people that are really standing out, it's only like a hundred or 200 people. It's not, it's, we're not talking like thousands or tens of thousands of people. There's, it's like a tiny percentage. Like my recent post was like saying there is no creator economy middle class because it's only the exceptional at the top that get all the rewards. And if that's not going to change, that power law distribution is not going to change because it's like there's certain things you need to do to get to that top echelon and very few people are doing. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's like the Dickie Bushes and the Nathan, Nathan Lotkas and the Jack Butchers and the Sam Pars. There's probably like, like 200 people that consistently stand out and, and are, are standing above and beyond everyone else. The niche is, the, the long tail doesn't work because you don't make money in the long tail unless you're Amazon. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, it was a romantic idea um, from Chris Jensen that the, the, he wrote this book, The Long Tail, and mm -hmm. popularized this whole concept that the internet finally <laughs> enables the long tail tail but yeah no it just make the big the, the winners bigger <laughs> and yeah we have even even more blockbusters it's crazy that it worked out that way but yeah people are paralyzed by the number of choices so it na naturally concentrates on a small number of big blockbuster winners and everything else never shows up at the top lists and no one gonna read these books no one's gonna follow them that's unfortunate but yeah the reality <laughs> awesome all right it was good talking to you yeah it was nice to riff on all these ideas except yeah i, I would like to do a, a conversation on the who's winning at the great online game that would be a good one and, and go through that'd be a good post i think good idea good topic conversation yeah let's do it and we can maybe just then prepare some notes, like you said, compare, share notes on people we have on our list, people we have already analyzed. 
And yeah, then we can just talk about it, like these patterns we are seeing, the strategy, our own little experiments, what's working, what's resonating, and that, that would be very fun. So I will just 